Um, uh, I'm Paul Bachelman, town manager, and we this is a special meeting of the budget coordinating group. Uh, the budget coordinating group is composed of members from the town council, the school committee, and from the board of library trustees, plus staff to those three bodies. We have a um, time limit of an hour, so we're going to try to get through the substance part, part of the presentation in the first hour. And if, if, if the committee wants, the group wants to continue talking, we're here, here for that. So the first thing I'd like to do is just go around and um, sort of acknowledge who's here. So I'll just start, and if, if I'll say your name, and if you're here, just unmute and say you're, say you're here, and then unmute that back up again. So Lynn Griesmer. Here. Okay. Andy Steinberg. Here. Uh, Mandy Jo Haneke. Here. Kathy Shane. Here. Uh, Allison McDonald. Here. Uh, Carrie Spitzer. Here. Um, Bob Pam. Here. Uh, Chris Hoffman. I do not see him. Not here. Uh, Superintendent of Schools, Mike Morris. Here. School, school Finance Director, Doug Slaughter. Here. Uh, Library Director, Sharon Sherry. There you are. Oh, we don't hear you guys. I see you. Here. <laughs> Uh, Interim Finance Director, uh, Sonia Aldridge. Here. And Angela Mills, who is going to be our minute taker for today. So, um, um, so this, this is a presentation that uh, Sonia and I have been working on. It's about our finances, obviously, under these uh, circumstances. We've been, Sonia's been working on various uh, uh, groups of numbers and how we're going to get through this uh, for, for quite some time now. Uh, we just to sort of phrase this, the presentation was present was prepared um, by a team and we have a really good team. So Sonia is brings the numbers, I bring the words and Brianna Sunred who brings the pictures. So uh, we do a, um, it's a, it's a real team effort. Um, so the next slide. So today, we're, there are four items that we want to address. Um, I want to alert everybody that we will not be talking about specific numbers, specific percentages, how, how big cuts or additions would have to be, things like that. That's not the purpose of this meeting. That's the purpose of the next meeting, which we will get to. Um, we're, um, this is not because we don't know what those numbers are. We're, we're, we've, we've done a number of different scenarios, but we really believe that once you put a number out there, it sort of sticks and we wanna make sure that we follow the process and go through all of our committees, to make sure everybody's sort of understanding what they are before we just throw out a, a number. Um, we wanna make go about this methodically. Um, we wanna make decisions when we need to, with it, when we have as much information as we absolutely can get. Uh, that's, we have the, um, there's, uh, we don't have to be rushing through a lot of these things. I think we, if we look at, at it in a really uh, sustained, reasonable way, we're gonna get through this. We're in a good shape financially. We have a really good team. We have terrific people working together. Um, the things that elected officials can bring in the public is patience because we are all gonna be really anxious to find out what the answer is. And sometimes the answer is that we don't know the answer and we need to wait. And so I think I think we have enough experience on all of our elected boards to recognize that that's where we're going to be. Uh, the message that I want today is that we'll get through this. Uh, there will be pain. Uh, we'll have dashed hopes. We'll have um, a lot of disappointment. Things that we had hoped that we were going to do um, are not going to be done. You know, earlier this year, I had sort of give, put out to our department heads that we wanted a bias for action, that this was a year to take action. The council was prepared. Everybody was ready for it an exciting year. That's all changed dramatically. It doesn't mean we don't have the bias for action because we still have the bias for action. It's just going to be funneled in a different way. So, and I think the um, important thing for us is that we have a really good, um, it'll have a renewed sense of, of collaboration. I can't tell you how great it is to work with uh, library and school, um, with Doug Slaughter at the school. Um, he's got finance experience and a lot of experience on the select board. He knows the town side and he brings that to the school. You all know that we have, I have um, appointed Sean Magano as the finance director for the town. He has the school things that he brings to the town. 
and there's be cross you know fertilization there it's going to be i think we have a we're right in a really good position staff wise to manage through this um, we have people who have years of experience sonia has been here for a lot of years i won't say the number um, but has been through these ups and downs as has andy steinberg and other members of the council and so people have seen what it feels like and, and they can really give an, uh, some perspective to that. And I'll be asking Andy to weigh in a little bit on that as well. Um, so I think that, that we're in a good shape to move forward. Uh, so the next step, next slide. So this body doesn't work um, by um, vote. We don't take votes. Uh, this body works by consensus. It actually was put into the charter because it had worked so well previously. It was not many communities have a body like this. Uh, this is especially one that's written into this, the charter. Uh, so I really appreciate everybody putting the time into it. What we wanna walk away today, these are the takeaways, is that we wanna talk about a one month budget. We want there to be consensus that we will then look at a FY21 budget and we wanna look at a schedule. So th that's the framework that we are looking at for today's meeting. Um, and, and just a note that that schedule that we look at, that's gonna change. We're gonna, we're gonna look at it today and then I'm sure it will change over time. So next slide. So the first thing um, the, with the budget coordinating group, historically, the chair of the finance committee and the chair of the select board were the co-chairs of the budget coordinating group. And I, was, I would like to, without objection, ask that to continue in, in a sense for this group so that I would ask Andy Steinberg is the chair of finance and Lynn Griesmer is the chair of the council to basically co-chair um, this group and then uh, turn it over to Lynn to sort of take over running the meeting and Andy to weigh in on terms of um, what, what he, how he sees BCG looks, you know, looks like and what its function is so everybody understands their role. There's many people on this call who've never been part of BCG before. So, if there's no objection to that, I'll just ask Lynn to, to take the reins. Is that okay? I see no objections. So. That's fine, except maybe I thought it was the other way, but that's okay. Um, so let me just ask Andy and Mandy Jo to um, review the charter section 5.2 so that we get a sense of both history and the intent of the charter group as they coded this into our government act. So Andy. Next slide. I was waiting for the next slide. Um, so the budget coordinating group, I, I'm gonna give a little bit of history and then Mandy might weigh in as to why the charter commission decided to continue it. The history piece is that it, um, there was a point in time uh, when I was early on in the finance committee, the old finance committee, that there was a lot of tension that would develop at some town meetings because various boards and committees had uh, taken different positions on how the budget development should be and were not communicating during the development of the budget. And, uh, we were looking for a way to try and keep that from happening again. This goes back to when John Misanti was the uh, finance director and uh, was staffing the finance committee and Larry Schaefer was uh, the uh, town manager. And uh, John and three of us from the old finance committee were talking about this after um, one of the finance committee meetings. And we came up with the idea of having a budget coordinating group. Um, and so you can blame us, but we're here. <laughs> and uh, it has worked very effectively when it's needed. Uh, my observation, having been involved in this for quite a number of years, is it is this type of t um, period when we're really in a critical situation where the group is most active and most important. Uh, years when um, we've had uh, sort of routine budget and things flowed smoothly like last year, 
BCG really didn't need to meet at all and frequently would have only one or at most two meetings a year. Um, but uh, this harkens back to um, 2008-2009 period uh, when we had a lot of uncertainty going through the process. The major points that we try and do um, is to have a group that could meet, talk about the process, talk about the coordination of the calendar, um, and try and reach consensus on um, points. And uh, if one uh, budget was in particular stress for some reason, to be able to have a mechanism to talk about that within the, the group of um, uh, boards and uh, senior staff who are involved in the process to see if there was a way to resolve that. Uh, so that's basically it. Mandy, um, I don't know if you have anything to say about what the Charter Commission's thoughts were. Um, I'll be brief. Uh, we had heard when we were writing this section um, or the whole finance section that the way finances worked in town um, under the previous government were fairly successful. And so people had sought for us to try and mimic that in a way as much as possible. And one of the things they spoke positively of was the BCG. And so we thought we should write something like that in to keep the success of our coordination going. Let me just mention one other piece of history that goes here. We actually did meet on November 7, 2019. Uh, at that point, it was the full school committee, the full um, library board, and the full town council for what we called the financial indicators meeting or the three boards meeting. Well, we were just so sure that everything was going to be just fine that we also designated that as the BCG meeting. And so th this group has met, but in a different format once before. So that brings us today, and I'm going to turn it back to Paul. Okay, so we can go to the next slide. Thank you for that historical uh, yeah, lesson, history lesson, Andy. Um, so uh, for today, there I mentioned three things. So we want to talk about a one-month budget and FY21 budget. Um, and the reason we're talking about a one-month one budget, it's also called a one-twelfth budget, is because we just don't have enough information to make an informed uh, decision on a FY21 budget. So at this point in time, we will be asking the town council for uh, the ability to do a one month budget, which is permitted in the state law, um, and, um, and then move forward from there and have a schedule for doing the rest of the year. The longer you wait to do an entire budget, especially if you're looking at um, changes to the budget that might be level funding or, or reductions in budget, it's harder to implement so that you have less time to implement. So we don't want to go beyond one month if we don't have to. Um, so go to the next slide. So I'm going to, um, so we just want to talk in general terms and Sonia can weigh in here about what, what we see in terms of where we are. And I'll, I'll start and Sonia can jump in on some of these things. Again, we're not going to really talk about the actual dollars, but we can tell you where, where we are, what the soft, soft parts are. Um, so you want to just talk about third quarter revenues, Sonia? Yeah, trying to figure out how to unmute this thing. <laughs> um, third quarter revenues uh, are really in line with most, most of um, historical third quarter revenues. Uh, we're going to see the real impact in the fourth quarter. Um, what we're going to see is mostly in local receipts. Those are all economically driven um, receipts. Definitely meals and hotel tax. Um, definitely. Uh, our parking revenue. Parking revenue, ambulance revenue. Our calls have been way down since all the colleges closed up. Um, investment income in the fourth quarter will definitely go down. And we're still waiting for some uh, money for some of the colleges. But, I think it, but other than that, for the third quarter, I think it looks good. It looks like we'll have a deficit, but it won't be so huge that savings from the operating budget won't be able to cover it. So I think for this, for this fiscal year, 
we will be okay. So that, that's, that's a good news story that FY20, we think that we'll be okay in terms of our, where our budgets are. We do have increased expenditures, but we have, um, and we have reduced um, income, but I think it's going to, Sonia's estimation when she projects out is that we should be okay throughout the FY20, right? Okay, so that's on the general fund side. When you get yeah. to the enterprise funds, yeah. not having, we were already having some issues with our enterprise funds because what, um, consumption was way down. So we've been readjusting our estimates for that. This is just, this is just another big explosion in water, sewer, and, and transportation revenue as well for parking. So those we're starting to look at now. We should have more information on that in a week by the end of next week. Yeah. But we're going to have deficits in those accounts as well. So at the end of next week, we'll have April numbers in. We can start to look at that. That'll help, that'll help us. Yeah, so, so the big the things where we're seeing is parking and, parking and tickets, which is our transportation fund, hotel, motel, and meals tax is going down. Ambulance fees, uh, just calls have dropped off dramatically. Um, building permit fees have, have pretty much dried up. And, and then our water and sewer revenue, we, you know, UMass and Amherst College are our two largest users of water and sewer. Um, they both have depopulated their campuses, so they're using a lot less, and they don't have the workers coming to work as, as, as much anymore. So all that usage is, is now gone, and that's a significant impact. Um, we've had some um, expenses for PPE. We've added staff at the fire department uh, for this temporary piece. Um, we've had to purchase a lot of new technologies. I know the school has done the same. Um, and then we have some other public health expenses that we've, we've incurred. But again, with all that, and I think we're still within range of where we need to be. Um, so if you wanna to go to the next slide. So the big question for us is about, a major question for us is about state revenue and what's going to happen to us on state aid. Um, state, state aid makes up almost 20% of our budget. So what happens at the state matters a lot to us. Um, so, and one of the things I think what I've been hearing is that FY20, and Mike may have some, or Sharon may have some other in, input on this, but FY20 seems like, I think the state's gonna stay stable with what they're giving us and all that stuff. So I think we'll be okay on that. Mm -hmm. FY21 is a big, big question mark. So mm -hmm. Did you wanna add something, Sonia? No, I was just agreeing with you. Okay. <laughs> well, that's a first. I forgot, <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> We can go to the next slide. <laughs> okay, so this is information that um, was developed by the Mass Municipal Association. I'm sort of truncated it down a little bit and there's a few slides here I wanna talk about. So what we just said, there's no clear answers really for FY20 or 21. Uh, the, it's, a re it's a significant recession. It's unlike other recessions we haven't had. And as Lynn noted yesterday, and she's been on some of these Zoom calls too, and. It, and this is a long-term recession, and we don't really know how it impacts Massachusetts because of we're an education, medical, facility-driven um, economy, eds and meds, as she called it. Um, and so I think that, that we don't know how we will come out of this um, as quickly. Um, when this happens, state and local revenues um, will fall because of this economic standstill. The, the, you know, the capital gains um, are collapsing income taxes will fall because of uh, unemployment, um, sales tax, obviously people aren't buying things and if they're buying things or they're buying them online, um, gaming, lottery taxes, lottery revenue is down. Lottery revenue is a major source of income to the towns, cities and towns. Um, don't, we're not too worried about cash flow problems, but that might be an issue for the state. Obviously hotel and motel meals tax, um, 20% loss in FY20 would be $80 million out of the state budget. And if they're projecting another six months into FY21, that's it's like $200 million out of the state budget. Um, and then one of the things is the federal government said, you can't use any of the money that they're giving us to fill lost revenue um, pots. So these are things that we're going to have to just recognize that those things exist for this year and for, as we project forward for FY21. Next slide. Um, 
So the after a week delay, the legislature uh, had its a, a um, the budget writers get together from the Secretary of Administration and Finance, the chair of the House and the Senate Ways and Means Committees, and they listen to a lot of different uh, economic experts talk about what is, what's what's the economic forecast for the state. And the kind of consensus figure was around a 14%, 15% decline in revenues. So what does that mean? It means about a four to five billion dollars um, out of a $31 billion budget. And so that's a significant decline in the state's revenue. Um, the legislature isn't moving as quickly on this and doesn't, I don't really see them, you know, whether there's even a question whether they will come up with a, a, a agreed upon revenue figure. Um, a lot of interests at play, a lot of people's livelihoods at stake. Uh, this is going to be played out over a significant amount of time. And, you know, again, they don't even have a mechanism for meeting at this point in time. So it's really happening at the chair level of the Ways and Means Committees and the Senate and state in the House leadership. Uh, the good news is that um, we, the state does have a significant um, rainy day fund, $3.5 billion. Sounds like a lot of money. It's really um, not going to, it, it won't go as far as the way we think about our uh, rainy day fund. And uh, then that the, there was money that came in from the um, <clears throat> Federal CARES Act to help pay for some things. Um, there will be some FEMA reimbursement. Um, my concern with the FEMA reimbursement is that you've got, this is a 50 state uh, emergency. Everybody's pouring into FEMA expecting to get 75% reimbursement. It would not surprise me if the federal government said we can only go X, you know, 50% or something because it's such a widespread. It's not like a, a hurricane hit one section of the country. It's everybody. So the next slide. So, um, and, and I'm going to, you know, Andy may want to weigh in on this too. Um, or Doug may want to. Um, so, most, several of us have been in, in have been in local government for a while, and um, remember the Great Recession of 2008, which lingered into 2009 and 2010. And this is where um, tax revenues dropped by 10%. Um, unrestricted aid, UGA, U G G A, um, was uh, that was given to uh, cities and towns was cut by 20%. Um, uh, education aid was held harmless in some ways, uh, where it was actually once it was, it was not cut as deeply uh, because there was federal help that helped uh, off, you know, offset some of the cuts that were due in education. Um, it, the legislature helped by introducing local option meals taxes and uh, lodging taxes, um, but that's sort of off the table this, this time. Um, so there is um, a lot of call for um, federal help. Um, but the problem at the federal level is, I'm not sure if anybody saw it, but yesterday you had Mitch McConnell, the, the president of the Senate, basically say he'd like to see cities and states who've been profligate with their pensions go bankrupt and declare bankruptcy uh, so they could abrogate some of those agreements. Um, I think that's not, you know, the, the House Speaker Pelosi had said that this helping cities and towns and localities and state governments was a high priority for the Democrats. Um, how that plays out in the um, in, in the uh, federal legislature, I don't know. But um, it was kind of disturbing to hear the, the Senate president make such, or the majority leader makes uh, such um, uh, clear and contemptible, in, in my way, my view, comments about local government and state governments, and seeing that basically saying you have to learn a lesson with this. Uh, economic catastrophe. Uh, we can go to the next slide. So, uh, so there's four things we want to talk about in terms of a calendar. So I'm going to shift from that's the sort of general words uh, description of where we are. Again, we're not throwing numbers out there. Uh, we will do that at our next one because we want to show you really what the parameters are because that will inform the kinds of decisions that the Council and the school committee and the library trustees will have to make ultimately. So uh, this new this schedule, which Andy put together, and he put it together, um, uh, and really thank him for the work he's put into this. He's been doing a lot of very deep thinking on this. Um, 
covers uh, our one month budget, our FY21 budget, the regional school budget, although we don't really have anything in there that's just in there as a placeholder because we know that that exists. And then we also recognize that we, at the same time, we have to be talking about our capital improvement plan. Uh, so the next slide. So, um, well, think back. Uh, these were the good old days. <laughs> this is what, this is where we were. Um, this was our schedule um, going into this fiscal year. Um, we were so young and innocent then. It was a wonderful time. Uh, we were on track, schools, library, everybody had built their budget. We, had, we were ahead of schedule on the town side with our budget. Sonia and her team had done so much work with department heads reviewing budgets. We had taken a different approach. It was really working out really well. We built this great sandcastle and we're getting ready to start to present it to the council and the, and the finance committee. And then this tidal wave came in and just washed it all away. All that work is just gone. Um, so it was kind of demoralizing, um, but I think you know we all sort of have gotten beyond that and recognize that this is a new challenge that we get to take on and that's gonna be um, something different this year. So we can go to the next slide. So this is, this is the next two slides are, are a scheduled uh, modified that, that uh, Andy put together. And I thank, again, thank him for that. And he has it color coded, which I didn't know until we talked yesterday because I'm colorblind. And um, <laughs> so it's helpful to know that it is color coded. Um, and um, I'm not sure if you want to talk about this, Andy, or if you want me to walk it through, it's either one is fine by me. Um, I'll just say a couple of things and then let you go back to it. What I tried to do with this was uh, uh, to mirror the process that you saw in the last slide, but to make it work within the time frame that we have uh, going forward for, uh, so that we can get to an end result both for the one month budget for the first month, July, and for a full year budget. And uh, so I thought if we were going to try and mirror that prior slide as much as possible, that we would need to um, take today's initial discussion and get uh, a, a, a real estimate of the revenues that uh, we see going forward. Because if you think back to that, uh, meeting that we had uh, that started the process that was uh, referred to as the first BCG meeting of all of the boards and committees, that it was um, principally to kind of take a look at the financial health of the uh, town and then to make projections for revenues for the next year and make some initial suggestions from the town manager about um, priorities and division of money, then it was, uh, it went to uh, the finance committee of the council uh, to develop some guidelines and send them along to uh, the council, the council to agree to it so that there was um, unity of uh, um, the uh, executive and legislative branches going into the budget development process, setting timelines for getting, um, which is actually charter provision uh, to uh, have a have date certain for getting um, elementary school and library budgets back and uh, uh, which then would enable the town manager to propose a budget um, in accordance with uh, the state statute uh, which I think is chapter 44, uh, section uh, 32, uh, something like that. But in any event, uh, that that would generally be the process. And of course, then the next thing that comes up is how do we set dates into that? Um, and uh, I did do some thinking about dates. Um, we In the final version that you have, we pulled some of those dates out so that they're um, not uh, avail we don't show them now um, because uh, that was makes it uh, but we do show some dates I would say that most of them are really what the discussion today is about because a major role of the budget coordinating group 
is to talk about calendar. And uh, I would, so we want to be realistic about calendar. The original, uh, the, the color scheme that was referred to is that the red dates are um, not really town dates, the regional school dates, but I tried to make them fit in. Um, and there's therefore suggestions to the regional school committee and the superintendent, but they're not something that is um, a determination that uh, the town of Amherst can make. Um, the blue was intended to give us some guidance of things that would have to do with one month budgets and the black was intended to be the uh, full year budget process. So that was what the color coding was. So that as we go through this, um, the major discussion that we really need to have is whether the dates look realistic to fit in with the steps. But if you have questions about the steps, they, I, that should be brought forward too. Um, but uh, at least we need to start with a framework and that's what this is. Thanks, Andy. So conceptualizing this was, was really important. So if you look at the slide, uh, the first thing is where we are today. BCG is talking about the budget challenges and the revised budget schedule. Uh, Finance Committee meets this afternoon and they will look at some of these same things um, for the, the Town Council Finance Committee. Um, the, on Monday, we I will present and the Finance Committee I hope will support the extension of the deadlines for the school and library su budget submissions to the manager and revise deadline for the manager to submit um, the operating and capital budgets to the council. May 11th is the date that we're targeting. And that was a date we had previously had secured for the library trustees and the council to meet. So I felt confident that they, or Lynn felt confident that the tr trustees would be available. And we hope that members of the school committee can attend or watch um, set, you know, at a different time. And that's the time when Sonia and I will be talking more specifically about where we, what. The, the scope of the issue that we're talking about in terms of where we are financially on, on the entire situation. The next day, uh, the finance committee we expect will meet and talk about you know, what does what kind of what does this imply for the existing budget guidelines? The existing budget guidelines the council has adopted are pretty much irrelevant at this point in time because they call for things expecting a normal budget process budget uh, income. And that's not the case anymore. We had, you know, Andy was able to identify the sort of things that, and Mike can speak to these things at another time, a little bit later if he wants to, about the the um, or ten, about the regional school budget. And I know he has a lot more information about that. And I, I haven't really reviewed this schedule at all with Sharon or Mike, so um, they may have they may blow this out of the water, and that's fine too. Um, and then we have May 18th is slotted in for when the um, Council would look at the revised budget guidelines, and then we would say if we agree to a one month budget, then that would be expected from the school and the library on May 20th. If we can go to the next slide, Sean. Uh, then the, then we would ex we're, looking, we're looking for a June 1st, and I think this is overly optimistic, but we're gonna put it on the calendar for when the school and library FY21 budgets would be submitted. Um, we'd be looking for JCPC to have a bare bones capital plan ready by June 1st as well. I don't think there'll be hardly anything on a capital plan at this point in time. Um, then I would submit on June 1st, the one month budget to the council, uh, which under the council rules is an automatic referral to the finance committee. The finance committee would consider that and then three weeks later would make a recommendation to the council on the one month budgets. Um, then Basically, what it, I'm not going to go through every one of these things, but it just basically pushes everything out a month. Um, and with the goal of having the council approve budgets for all three entities by July 20th. So actually, I'd like to open up the mic and see if he has any idea or thoughts on where the, um, especially about the regional school district or Doug, if you have thoughts as well on uh, any of these calendars, if these are reasonable or not. Yeah, so uh, from my perspective, I'll start talking about the region. So. Doug and I were both on a conference call with the state, uh, perhaps last week. They're all blending together a little bit for everybody. And uh, the one thing they were very, the, with their regional school um, folks at, at DESE at the Department of Education, 
they were very clear on three things. One was that they expect no regional school district to have a past budget on July 1st. Uh, a couple of reasons for that, the uncertainty that the town manager spoke about, but also uh, every, I think, I believe every regional school district has, has at least one, if not more, multiple towns that use a town meeting format for uh, passing a budget. And it's very unclear whether any town will actually be able to safely hold their town meeting or how they will safely hold their town meeting this spring. So between those two factors, um, DESE is not, um, I mean, they, they said their guiding assumption is that they will have no pass budget from a regional district by July 1st. And they were emphatic about that point. The second thing they shared with us is that because of that, they are actively preparing for that eventuality uh, in supporting regional school districts with, with what one twelfth budgets might look like. They're not waiting till July 1st and then sort of managing it. They're actually looking and going down each regional school district and seeing where they are and um, not communicating directly with us, but they feel like they will be prepared to support uh, what a one twelfth budget looks like in each regional district. And the third thing that um, perhaps is of particular note to this body is that, um, as many of you know, in the past, the way one twelfth budgets work is for regional school districts is they default to the statutory method, which is not a method we've been on for many, 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 you know, not in recent years anyway. Uh, and uh, on the conference call, there was a number of us superintendents who were weighing in on that point. And uh, to Desi's credit, a couple of us got an email response from the person running the meeting saying, that's under normal circumstances. These are not normal circumstances. And they, they do not plan to hold districts to the statutory method for a 1 12th budget under these circumstances. And you know, they're, they're talking to the legal department whether there needs to be legislative review on that. Um, but they felt uh, the email indicated strong confidence that each district will be looked at uniquely uh, and it won't be a blanket rule of statutory method um, for all. And, and in our situation, you know, that was very reassuring for me and my role because I know that would uh, create a number of issues, uh, both for the town of Amherst, but for the region more generally. Uh, I think the other point, uh, I certainly don't want to speak for Kerry or Allison, but from my vantage point, uh, the June 1st date uh, feels reasonable with the guidance that we're receiving for the town of Amherst for the Amherst public school budget. I think it gives the school committee and myself enough time to review, to gather feedback. Um, certainly, uh, I'm not at all speaking for the elected officials in charge of that, but from my perspective, uh, we've been working on budget the last two weeks furiously to, to um, with all of our principals, all of our district directors. Uh, that process is in motion. It'll become more public in coming weeks. We have a Amherst School Committee meeting tonight where we'll start talking about it, the FY21, but re-talking, I guess, about the FY21 budget um, that was previously passed. But, but certainly, as you said, um, Paul is not really um, where we're headed now. We have a regional meeting next Tuesday where we'll start that conversation that, with that body. So, uh, you know, from a district administrator perspective, um, we feel like we can do some some pretty heavy lifting in the short order because we know uh, the time, the timeliness of this really matters. It matters for our staff. It matters for, as you noted, as the town manager noted, it matters for our planning. We need to know how many sections there's going to be so we can place kids in classes and set up service delivery. Uh, for all those types of reasons, uh, we feel urgency to, to get this done as soon as possible in a reasonable, reasonable way that fits with uh, where we are today. So again, that's just my perspective. I want to be really cautious today that we have not had that conversation at school committee. We'll start that conversation tonight, but from my vantage point, um, the timeline sound reasonable with the exception perhaps of the region. Uh, my recommendation would be pushing that back because I don't, I don't think the June 1st thing I find unlikely, um, and given the guidance from the state, they're, they're essentially telling us to uh, slow down our processes at region because it, you know, it's unlikely that they'll play out uh, with any reasonable time frame. and whether the other three towns in the region are able to have their town meetings um, this spring is, is really an open question. Um, Mike, some point uh, we, you and I should talk. I have uh, had conversations with the finance committee chairs in Pelham and Shutesbury. Uh, they are fir pretty firmly set in their belief that they can go forward with June town meetings and have specific dates in mind. I have not had that conversation with uh, Leverett yet and uh, I'm not sure that uh, we don't need to do something to create a conversation that involves all of the towns. 
Yeah, so we could definitely follow up offline and I don't necessarily disagree with that point. Uh, I think the, the timeliness of that, um, I think is, is perhaps what we can talk about offline with, with you know, certainly involving Doug and perhaps the regional chair as well. Thank you, Andy. Thanks for that work. Doug or Carrie or Allison, do you have anything you want to add? No, I would agree. I think if um, uh, the a lot of the heavy lifting and the work is um, uh, is being done um, from the district, and the it's it's a matter of getting the meetings together and the the committee members to to um, weigh in and review. So I I think the timing is totally doable from our perspective. I'd agree. And, and Sharon or Bob, anything from the library's perspective? Yeah, so um, uh, from the library's point of view, this calendar that um, you all have put forth is is reasonable. We can we can do this. So, um, yeah. so okay, thanks, Bob. Uh, go to the next slide. So this is the calendar at this moment in time that the finance committee will be reviewing. So we also want to identify just that there are some town charter. Um, requirements that we also have to factor into this and that hasn't been overlaid on any of these um, calendars at this point in time. Um, so uh, these are things I've identified. Mandy, Joe may recognize others that I've missed. Um, I think you know, these, the dates on all these things, there are, there's, there are some provisions for exception to time requirements that the council can do. Um, you know, I think one of the challenges for this entire process is going to be adequate public involvement because I think there's going to be a we're going to need public engagement it's really hard to do it over these formats and how we uh, um, are able to do that effectively is going to be a big challenge for us um, typically we hold a meeting people show up um, it's hard to manage it in these types of settings but we're going to have to have some kind of focused way to engage the public as we make these you know make these critical decisions um, so, um, and, you know, in terms of their, you know, if we have, we're, we're going to be voting on one month budgets, we're going to be voting on um, capital improvement program, we're going to be voting on FY21 budget, and each of these oftentimes will require a separate public forum and all these other things. So that is going to be something the council, you know, the president and uh, vice president will be grappling with, I'm sure. And, providing guidance to the council and they can make some decisions on this. I'm not sure if Lynn or Mandy Joe want to weigh in on any of this. Mandy Joe, would, um, I'm not going to ask you on the spot whether we've gotten all of the charter uh, requirements, but I am going to ask that you take a review of the charter and make sure that we do and add whatever is needed in this list. And then that will allow us to see how we fit that into the calendar as well because we do want to publicize those public forums. Any comment on that, Amanda Jo? Um, briefly, it looks like most of what we've got, there's there's something in 5-7, um, the capital improvement plan requires um, either a forum or a hearing, some sort of something that's not on this list. But beyond that, the list looks fairly comprehensive, but we will have to figure out, the biggest question I have, um, as it relates to the charter requirements is what does a 112th budget fall under? Does it fall under 5-5 five, five for operating budgets or 5-6 for supplementary budgets? And that's something we might have to go to the town attorney on to figure out which one it falls under. So which public hearing or public notice um, requirements we have to follow for that portion of this budget. Um, but I, I will go through again and try and overlay stuff onto the timeline that was set forth. Thanks. Um, I also, um, Paul, when we get to the end of the slides, I want to make sure that we um, have an opportunity for some questions, but also uh, for me to just quickly make a, a couple summary observations, okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you. The, the other thing that I wanted to point out here while we're on this slide is that um, I think that the last action that the uh, council took at the request of the town manager was to extend the date for submission of the library and um, elementary school budgets to May 1st. And 
uh, obviously what we're proposing uh, today, and it seems to be consensus to do that, is to change it to June 1st. So that uh, a motion needs to be um, crafted through the Finance Committee to the Town uh, Council and the con Council adopting, hopefully on Monday, uh, that would shift those dates to coincide with the um, consensus agreement today. Yes, I agree. And I'll have a memo to the Finance Committee before your meeting this afternoon requesting that. And I think uh, Lynn and Mandy Joe had anticipated that for Monday's meeting, so that we should be okay. Uh, so the next slide, I have two more slides, Lynn, and then we can open up for a few minutes of questions. So next okay. slide. So I didn't, didn't want to lose track of other um, uh, processes that we have in play. The Community Preservation Act Committee, uh, that's a committee that makes it, uh, it provides its advice to the town council. It has a separate funding source. CDBG Advisory Committee makes a recommendation to the town manager, again, separate budget for budget source. And then JCPC, which makes a recommendation to the town manager, who then makes a, a um, presents a capital improvement plan to the um, town council. Uh, and so that, that committee will be active, will be drawing from the same pot of money. So I didn't want to really talk detail about these, but just to identify that we know that they exist and they're, they're there. And then the last slide. Next slide, Sean. And so this is where, you know, I, I said at the beginning and Andy had emphasized this, that this is a group that works by consensus. Um, and the three areas of consensus, I believe that we hope to do is that we have, a, that we will move forward um, as a town with all three entities developing one month budgets, that all three entities will be preparing an FY21 budget based on guidelines that the council ultimately uh, develops and that we have a schedule above that we've looked just reviewed and that those are the three areas of consensus and that the next major meeting will be on Monday, May 11th at 6.30, which is a not a regular town council meeting night, it's a special town council meeting. So this would be the only topic on the agenda unless the president decides to put something else on. So that's our presentation. So I will turn it over to Lynn and she can manage any questions and answers if that's okay. All right, so Sean, I'd like you to take the slides down so that we can see each other. And also now open the floor for questions from people who are here. Kathy. Um, yes, I, Paul, thank you very much for both the schedule and the heads up on what we're facing and Andy for the schedule. So I have a couple questions on the schedule on the, uh, the date you have of May, um, 18th for the council with revised budget outline with school giving their one month on the revised budget outline on the May 18th. Would that be just the one month or FY 21 also? That's my first question. And then my second question is you quickly went through the capital budget and said we probably won't have much of one. And when I looked at um, the projected capital we have, I mean, Sonia knows these numbers cold, but we have, you know, about a million four hundred in debt obligations. So we would at a minimum have to be paying those. So I think what you were, did I understand you correctly that we most likely won't have anything more than that? It's a part of a question. And would we go to a one month consideration or will we just go to full year on capital? Those are my two questions. Well, yeah. First was on scheduling, second was on capital. Thank you, Paul. Uh, so I think what I would hope is that based on the information that we provide on May 11th, the Finance Committee, then the Council can agree on budget guidelines for FY21. We may not have enough information for that to actually happen, but that's where that's a goal at this point in time. In terms of the capital, yes, there are certain things that we have to do. There may be other things that we really feel are important to do, uh, but it doesn't mean that this is the last shot at, at JCPC. Uh, you know, we can bring back, you know, additional items through the capital budget later in the year. I just think that this is sort of a, uh, what do we absolutely have to do on July 1 and what, what money do we have to have in place for that? Are there other questions? All I see is a, a 12 very sober faces. Um, but no surprise there. Mandy Jo. Yeah, my question was um, on the submission of the 
full year FY21 budgets. Um, we've got in this calendar when Paul will submit them to the council, June 29, um, but I'm not seeing when the library and schools would submit their FY21 budgets to Paul. Um, and so I know we talked about the one month timing of May 20 and June 1 feeling okay, but what would, when would they need to submit their FY21s to Paul for Paul to be able to do a June 29 date and whatever that date is, how do Sharon and Mike feel about, and, and then the school committee and library trustees think that they can fit that full year into that. Okay, let me start with Andy who may actually be able to answer that question or at least will note that we have to figure that out. Andy? Uh, yes, the uh, library and schools, if you look at that, uh, second of the schedule slides for FY21, the top line says library school submits FY21 school and library budgets to manager June 1st. So that was factored into the schedule. Okay, but Andy, you had your hand up otherwise. Yeah, the other thing that I wanted to um, just point out is that as we uh, as, and this is really not going to happen is a real discussion until May 11 when uh, Paul would make his presentation to the council and to the library trustees and the school committee at that um, special meeting that we were talking about. There are a couple of issues that we're going to have to be dealing with all the way through one of which was the subject that Kathy just brought up, which is the percent for capital. Um, because uh, what we, um, if you go to back to the history of uh, how that percentage came up, uh, it, it arose out of the old finance committee because we had uh, at that point, we're under investing in capital and the finance committee said as a goal, we should try and get it to 10%, but we were really below 5% at the time. And uh, it was said, it, it, it's a percentage of the uh, tax revenue. Since the tax revenue is uh, uh, governed by two and a half, it's not a movable thing. It just, is, it's, a, it's a number that is not changing, but it's all of our other, in revenue that's going down. And as a consequence, um, it may be in order to protect operating budgets that uh, Paul may make a recommendation to us to reduce that percentage and the council may agree that that's the proper thing to do. And, uh, but um, it's gonna start with a presentation from the town manager. The other subject that is going to be um, our, that we're going to have to be thinking about through this entire process is our reserves, the combination of free uh, cash and the stabilization fund. And uh, over the years, last few years, we had built that up with the intent that we would be able to use that to try and help with our uh, major building projects. But um, historically, um, those reserves have been used also in the way that state uses rainy day funds and uh, that falls into two classifications. Uh, one is uh, to uh, have funds available for the kind of year that we're facing for the um, FY21 budget development and to be able to uh, tap into reserves at the time and you build up reserves for that purpose. The other is to protect cash flow. And uh, so that there's uh, those competing needs for uh, the reserves that we've built up. And uh, we would uh, need uh, to have that conversation, we'll need to have that conversation and I expect it to start with a recommendation from the manager uh, at the May 11th meeting. I want to make sure that, Carrie, I know you have to jump off. Is there a question or a comment you'd like to make at this time? No, I just want to thank everybody for the hard work they're putting in on this and I think the clear explanation. So thank you. Okay. 
uh, are there questions from other people who are not on the council? Because I know, Kathy, you have your hands up. <laughs> we also have a finance committee meeting later today that we can also address some of these very questions. But as we're coming right up on nine o'clock. Uh, I have one clarification and uh, one comment, I guess. Um, we're talking about a single one month budget. Um, is it possible, I'm not saying it should be, to do two of them? And that's the question. And the second one is, um, we have depended entirely on these kinds of, of conference calls as our means of, use, of getting public comment. Uh, it may be that we should think about using the, the Amherst Gazette, the Hampshire Gazette, you know, uh, publishing something that we do, letting them publish it on their website as a way of expanding the number of people who actually see what we're doing. Okay, Paul? Yeah, yeah I, I think that's a really great idea to get as many avenues as possible to educate the public because this is a limited number of people. I mean, I think a lot of people, these can, are rebroadcast on Amherst Media so people can have access that way and from our websites, obviously. Um, there is a provision in state law that allows for additional one twelfth budgets, basically. I think we're proposing just one at this point with the hope that we will be able to um, achieve all of our goals for FY21 after one month. And I think Mike has some comments on that too. Yeah, so the limitation, like oh, I'm sorry. My apologies. No, go ahead, Mike. Um, so the limitation the schools have on that front is we have contractual guidelines of when we have to notify staff. Um, so the longer we go uh, and, and just, it's no surprise here that this fiscal situation could pot potentially involve uh, reductions of staffing as well as non-staffing financial uh, items. And so the longer we go, uh, the longer we're paying, you know, potentially on insurance um, um, for unemployment insurance for folks that we may or may not bring back. And so the, the longer we go without clarity, actually that increases our cost and it's not an insignificant increase. So, uh, and I only speaking from the school's perspective, we, uh, the sooner we can sort out however unfortunate the circum fiscal circumstances are, the better off we are because if we're incurring costs in summer months because we haven't sorted out our budget, it actually uh, makes the situation much harder for everybody involved. So um, the, one of the reasons I was eager to say that from my perspective, the school should be able to meet that timeline is because we want to both for ethical moral reasons, let our staff know where we're sitting, but also for financial reasons, it's in everyone's best interest. Um, the sooner we, you know, even in this situation can have a plan moving forward, even if it has to adapt a bit, the better off we are, not just, um, not just, um, yeah, fiscally. I mean, I, th there's all the other pieces about uh, ethically and morally for us, um, but, but in this conversation fiscally, there, there's a real cost to waiting. Okay. Um, Andy, do you have an, another final comment? Yeah, and a couple of things real quick. One is that uh, there is no limit to the number of one month budgets the a city can have. And we do operate as a city now under chapter 44. We not, and uh, so we have ultimate flexibility. Chapter 44, the, that section that um, refers to the budget process that includes this, uh, refers to um, a uh, one month budget, not a one twelfth budget. And that's very important um, to understand because uh, there are expenses that may um, be greater in the first month just because of the way that bills come due and uh, so that um, there is flexibility under the um, state statute that applies to Amherst now that allows us to um, have a July budget that's actually more than one twelfth or less than one twelfth and again that's something that we'll need to move forward uh, move through the process that we've previously described and the last thing is for um, people who are watching now and would like to make public comment. We did not build public comment into this meeting. The Finance Committee will be looking at the same slide deck this afternoon uh, when we meet and there is a public comment section in that meeting that was built into the agenda. Okay. All right, thank you. So since we made a conclusion that we would only hold this for an hour, we're going, I'm going to just quickly summarize. Uh, using Paul's points of consensus, 
first of all, that we uh, will be working toward a plan for a one month budget, noting again that that's not a 112th budget. Uh, we'll be working towards an FY21 budget, which would be for the remaining 11 months. Uh, we have a schedule which we know will probably change based on whatever might happen. Um, there is a desire, and I think this is reflecting Mike, that we actually move as swiftly as we reasonably can because of the problems of incurring expenses that delaying costs. And finally, that we figure out the best way to, our best ways, if you can, to get as much public input into this process as possible. With that, I'm going to adjourn the meeting. Okay, thank you. Thank you all.